crush are about three foot tall. We've got tomatoes on. We're at these two third fourth flower truss. And I wanted to show you this because I think if you look here, you can see the amount of roots that this plant, one plant has. If I put them in one hand, it's a handful. So I think that what I'm going to do with the six inch pipe will work just great because when the plants get everything they need, there's not an, a real extensive amount of roots. I built this water culture bed after my experience with my big greenhouse outside. It's actually no longer there because I really enjoyed the water culture type of hydroponics. And so I took my lessons out there in the big greenhouse and I brought them inside here. I call this my grow room. And it's temperature controlled, it's heated during the winter, and it's air conditioning during the summer. And I created an L-shaped water culture bed here, as you can see. And I learned more lessons in here, along with lessons learned from growing microgreens, in the style of microgreens I grow, uh, without soil and without medium. And of course that's hydroponic as well. And I am going to remove this and I'm going to start growing in a more efficient form of water culture. And I'm going to bring you along when I do that. I'm going to show you how I'm going to take this and minimize it, make it smaller and more efficient to, to both grow and to clean out, to change the water and all of that. This is a 10 foot piece of PVC pipe that is six inches in diameter. My grow room, the long side is 10 foot long. That's what the water culture bed was. So I'm going to transform this and fit it in the place where the water culture was. First thing I need to do is draw a straight line across the PVC. And with a rounded form, that can be difficult to do. So I took one of my 4x4s I had lying around and I vice, I clamped it down onto the edge here. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to put the uh, pipe against it. I'll show you that to draw a straight After line. I've clamped the 4x4 on, I clamped the 6 inch PVC to the wood itself. Now there's a little bit of a gap here, so I'm going to take a level and I'm going to let it rest and tilt it up till it makes a contact there. And then I'll draw a straight line all the way down the length of the pipe. And that will make it exactly the same place on either end of the pipe. All right, I've got it clamped down and I've got the pencil line across the top because I need to do some cutting. I'll end the pipe here and what I need to create now is a drain and air supply. And I'm going to do that both using what I've got here. This is three quarter inch PVC with threaded small piece and a another piece here for the inside of the pipe. Now this is the side that goes in the bell and it is flat. The other side is a little bit rounded. So I want to use a flat surface here and so I'm going to drill a hole and the short side is going to be inside the hole and this side will be poking out. Let me show you that. So I used my drill here with a one inch bit on it and I went on the inside because the outside has a lip if you can see here. And if I start with the inside it leaves me enough room for the PVC piece. Now these two fittings fit together. You can find them in any big department, um, Lowe's or Home Depot or anything like that. And the what I'm using as a gasket is a garden hose 
the little piece of nylon or rubber sometimes it's used inside of a garden hose to create a seal. I'm going around the three quarter inch pipe here with that. Now, let me turn it over here. You can see that this does not fit exactly in it. What I used in the past to wallow it out was I took the drill and I just wallowed it. I just like this while it was in here. And then I finished it off with a razor blade knife or a box cut or whatever you want to call it by going around the edge here and removing a little bit of the material. And here's what the finished product likes, looks like. And I can stick a regular three quarter inch PVC pipe in there. All along the pipe here, I drilled my old and usual three inch net cup holes. There's one every 12 inches like I marked before and then I drilled it and the reason why I did that is twofold. One is I'm going to grow tomatoes and peppers in a one inch net cup, a little bit one inch net cup. But I also wanted the ability to put a pot on top of here like I did in the Fawn 2 system and grow a container of soil where it would wick nutrient water up. Now this hole is also going to serve as a way to put the dividers in here. And the dividers are pieces of foam that are going to fit in the pipe here and they'll keep the roots separate from each other. That way if I want to pull one out it'll come out easily and it won't be all tangled. Um, and also the divider is going to serve as uh, a water baffle to keep sloshing but it's also primarily going to serve as a way to hold the airline down. All that will become clearer as I go. In order to fit the baffles, or not the baffles, the dividers in, I need to make it wide enough that a, a piece will fit in here and I cut this piece of foam that I'm going to use as a template and I'm going to mark either side and with a pencil here that way I can slide it in there and twist it and it'll move it over to the center. Let's see, I made the markings here and because this hole can serve the left and right side there's no need to do it on every one. Got them done now and they work great. Kind of looks like the old Air Force symbol that was on the side of planes in the old days. They had two stripes on either side with a star. Anyway, yep. They all look good, and uh, before I can put the dividers in, I need to put the airline in, and that way I can put it down, twist it on top of the airline, and it'll hold the airline at the bottom of the pipe. Inside the grow tube is a three-quarter inch piece of PVC pipe. It's the same exact one I took out of the water culture beds, the big L-shaped ones. Um, that's at the beginning of this video, I'm sure. And so it's got the holes, one on this side and one on the opposite side, every 12 inches, which is exactly what I need for this. So when this is, the cap is in place, this will be on the bottom. I'm going to put chambers in it that'll hold it on the bottom and separate the roots. I'll talk about that in a minute. But once this is in place, and it's pushed to the bottom, it will serve not only to fill these, but it also serve to drain these. And it'll keep the root, it'll allow the roots to be trapped between chambers and, um, and uh, the draining and filling will go through the pipe itself. Also, this, as you saw by the holes, will be the air system. So not only will the pipe hold liquid, it'll also hold air. So when the pump kicks on, it'll push the liquid out through the holes and then air bubbles will uh, pop up front through the uh, nutrient and it'll become an aerated water culture. I wanted to show you what it looks like when it's filling. It won't be under this much pressure, but it can be if I wanted to. So I've got it hooked up to my hose here and I got a little adapter I put on the end of it. Um, real easy to do, but 
I want to show you what it looks like. And this is also how I clean out pipes and holes. I'll show you that in a second. And put the water into it. Okay. You can see there that there's a nice stream of water coming out of every single hole. And that's how you know that the holes are not clogged up at all. If one of these holes, let's say this one for example, wasn't coming out very strong, what I do is I just turn the water pressure down like this, and I've got this little tool here I call a clean-out tool. I use that when I sell my microgreens kits, and I just take and I plug through or push through the little hole while the water is running. Let me make sure I got you in the camera there. Yeah, okay. And then I just kind of twist and poke in and out like that. And it kind of walls it out and it'll clean out any debris that may be in there. Salt buildup or whatever. It doesn't happen hardly at all, but it does happen. So let me turn this water off and talk about the clean out tool. Every one of these holes here are a number 57 drill bit. And that's what's in this little tool here, the clean out tool. It's a number 57 drill bit that I put the drilling side in this little piece of plastic here. I drilled it in and I glued it with Gorilla Glue and I snapped off the excess. So the same drill bit that's used, and you can buy these real cheap, like 10 for, I don't know, $4 or something. But anyway, uh, the same drill bit that I used to make the hole is the same one I used to make the clean out. And so that's how I clean it out. I use an adapter that's a PVC male that goes into a water hose, a little piece here, and a, just a slip, three-quarter inch slip to go over the pipe. Now this is, when it's in the tube, the grow tube, this will not be glued in. I have it so that I can reach inside the tube, twist it loose, and pull it out and clean it if need. I'll show you that um, in a little bit. Got a little bit of wind. I hope it's not affecting the noise of the video mic. Anyway, as you'll see here, I've glued the end on, and there's a little bit of a gap there. And uh, the reason is because this goes in about this far. You can see in there where it is. So I've got this much glued in. But I took a I took a, this and I put it over the edge here, and I tapped it with a hammer. And it's, it's difficult. It was difficult for me to get all the way in. But I, I know I've got a good seal, so that's okay. That'll be good enough. And of course, the drain is at the bottom of the pipe itself. The drain, air supply, and fill tube. And so everything looks good. Now, um, the cap, the other end, is an over cap. And you can tell if you look in here. Um, well, first off, this wasn't that hard to get on. Uh, not compared to the other end. It slid in. But this one, uh, you, I mean, what you can see here is that there's no pipe in here. And I did that on purpose because I need to be able to take the pipe in and out. So let me show you. See in here that I've got three-quarter inch piece of short pipe here and a three-quarter inch slip connector. And it comes into the tube some. And that's so I can pull it out and push it back in. I'll stick my hand in through here to do that. But uh, I've got the pipe here. Let me show you what it looks like. Come down to the very end here with the cap. And I go in, one-handed, of course. Two-handed would be much easier. And <laughs> I'm trying to do it here on camera with you, so I'm kind of pushing it in pretty good. Okay, so we get to the end here, and then, of course, there's a little piece on it's on the end here. Let me get it out of the way. We can see where it's actually uh, pushing or connecting right there. So I'm gonna stick my hand in, and I'm going to pull it over first. And now that it's in the tube, let me see. Make sure that I can see you because the sun. I've got sun glare here. Okay. So now that it's in here, I can just take and twist it in, and I can 
orient the holes any which way I want in here. And um, then to take it out, I just simply undo it like that and pull it out the same way I put it in. So that's the design. So I can take that out and clean it out if there's any holes that are plugged or something like that. Like I said, it doesn't happen. One of the things I noticed on the aerated water culture is that when the pipe filled with air, it tried to lift up. There was a lot of buoyancy. So what I need to do is I need to hold that down on the bottom. And I've got a plan for that. I'm going to use a divider that's a hole down and it also will separate the two holes so the roots can't grow into each other. And the reason why, I think I mentioned this before, but the reason why I went with a three inch net cup was not only so I can put a, I mean a three inch hole, so I could put a three inch net cup in it, but also so that I could pull the roots out easily. Because the tomatoes and whatnot will be growing in an actual one inch hole. And that'll become clear hopefully in a little bit. So I took a piece of pipe here, extra pipe, and I pushed it into the foam so I could get an outline to make my divider. I also took a piece of three quarter inch pipe, the same that's in the tube, and I pushed it in as well. Now I know what I need to do to make my divider. Just follow the lines. I just uh, cut that out with a box knife and you can see what the shape looks like when I'm done. It goes over the PVC and uh, this is the filled inside diameter of the gun. Put it in here, twist it sideways and push it over. You can see the divider's in there and I made these every other one where I can put my hand in but I'm going to use a pipe on the other side here because the pipe won't fit in this one. And I'll hold the bottom while I lift up on the top on this side. And then I'll orient the, hose, the uh, piping on the very bottom and set the divider in place about halfway between the two holes. I want to show you how it gets filled. And I'm using a hose as an example uh, from the house here, house pressure. And I'm going to fill it. Now, normally the way it's going to be filled is through gravity feeding. I'm going to have a float valve in a little reservoir that will feed. I'm going to have four of these, two long and two short, two 10 foots and two 5 foot, and um, to fit in that winter grow room. But I'm using the hose here to fill it, but normally it would be gravity fed and kept full. Uh, but for the purposes of this, I want to show you what it looks like here. So. These are not glued on. This valve is not glued on. Nothing but inside here, in that, or from here to the other place in there is glued. The connection of the pipe. Everything else is not glued. All right, so I'm gonna turn it on with a little bit of force. Hopefully, you can see in there the water coming out of the little holes. Now, the water is coming out of there but it's going to be air. You can see it's filling up. There's a little bit of gap underneath the pipe or around the pipe too, so water can equalize under that um, to make sure it's kept level. But um, also it's coming in equally in each chamber. And I mean by, what I mean by chamber is each area from here, the divider, to here where the other divider is. It's about a, um, well, it's 12 inches. So it's about a 12 inch by six inch tube. And that equates, I've already did the calculations online, equates to about 1.3 to 1.4 gallons per um, plant all along here. The total tube volume is equal to, um, 15 gallons, roughly 15 gallons. Now once it's full, the same holes that filled up can also serve as a drain. You see here I've turned the line on and those holes are allowing water into the three quarter inch PVC and it's draining back out. I'm not gonna sit here and um, videotape the whole drain. It takes about 30 minutes to drain. But that's a good thing. Um, all I have to do is provide a hose in and I can fill it up the rest of the way. Or in the case of when a plant's growing in it, it'll already be full. And then all I have to do is just let it drain. Just go put a hose on it on all four tubes. We'll drain out in about 30 minutes. Then all I have to do to add more in is either fill the reservoir back up 
or I could take and take one of these off and fill it up directly. But um, all these plants will be sealed in there and it'll be nice. It'll have a lot of moisture in it so they won't dry out. The plants won't dry out in 30 minutes. So that's all there is to it, about 30 minutes. This will drain down to almost empty.